In this tutorial we're going to look at cutting out an object. How to extract or cut out an object from an image in Affinity Photo on the iPad, thereby separating it from its original background or other content. Now this is something that people are wanting to do quite a lot. So this is a quick reference to this particular um, tutorial. To start the process involves using the selection brush tool for selecting or tracing out the object and adjusting the settings from the refine selection box to refine the edges of the cutout. So launch Affinity Photo on your iPad remember. Tap plus to open the from um, options. Now this can be from an image in the in the um, photo gallery or sitting in your file somewhere or even in iCloud wherever you've got an image that you want to use. In this case I'm going to use the image of a lens sitting on a table. Now I want to use this lens to emphasize a different image. Now the image I'm using has a darkened area along the bottom edge so I need to use a curves adjustment to lighten the image so I can effectively select it, so I can see it more clearly. You must remember to remove this curves adjustment layer later on. And you can see there I've selected the adjustment layer and selected curves. Now I've tapped on the little curves icon you can see in the context toolbar, brings up that big box and then you adjust the curve and I've adjusted it there so that it's um, allowing me to see the edges very clearly of the lens sitting on the table. It's removed all the dark areas. I'm not worried about whether it's a good photo at this stage because it's only a mask and I can delete it in the end and leave the, leave the uh, lens itself um, as fine as it was. So in the selection persona pick the smart selection brush tool We've moved from the photo persona to the one right next to it, the selections persona. Drag over the object you want to extract to trace out a selection. The selection region increases with each drag that you make of your pen or finger as mode is set to add by default. Now you can see I've gone right around the lens there you can just see the dotted line or the crawling ants line around it. If there's an unwanted spill in the selection, change the mode to subtract. You've got add or subtract. Now with the subtract on, you just tap very gently on that area and it will reduce it so that it comes back. You can move that in and out by adding or subtracting till you get it fairly refined. Now the edges of the selection can be much finer really, especially against the background. So click on the refine button that appears in the context toolbar. A red mask will be applied. And you can see it there. And the red mask is applying to everywhere that's not within the selection. There's even one almost in the middle of the lens there, just below the numbered graduations on it. There's a red patch there. And you can see that we've got the selections down the bottom, the context toolbar, we're going to deal with that now. A red layer overlays the portion outside of the selected area and the refine selection dialog box is active. That's the in the left hand toolbar, the refine selection dialog box is the bottom one. As can be seen we have a fairly coarse selection. To achieve a much finer selection, we have to make some adjustments in the Refine Selection dialog box to the right on the context toolbar. There's a little right facing arrow will take you to it. Now this will be a matter of experimentation on your part because depending on the image that you're refining, what these uh, settings are. And the only advice I can give there is to experiment with the image you're using to see just what you need. Now what I've got there, you can see that the Refine Selection toolbar is on the left and the Context toolbar is there. So we've got Border, Smooth, Feather, 
and ramp. The ramp field alters the size of the selection. Positive values will enlarge it and negative values will shrink it. Set it to around minus 20%. Smooth determines the curvature of the selected area's edge. So set it to 3 pixels. Next, we have feather, which sets the softness or opacity at the edge of the selection. Set its value in this case to 5.1. Lastly, increase the adjustment brush to some 100 pixels. You'll have to experiment, as I mentioned, depending on your image, so this little section can actually take you some time. With the adjustment brush, paint over the edges which need to be refined. Then tap Apply. And you can see what I've got there. Border, Smooth, Feather and Ramp in the Context Toolbar. Now I've got a red border showing around there which is far too, uh, far too enhanced. So I will need to refine those selections there. When you tap Apply, you end up with the selection that you're looking for. Now be careful here, you can see it's a very light image, I've still got the Curves Adjustment layer enabled, but I'll have to remove that. Now from here, it's pretty much up to you what you want to do with the selected image. First, as I mentioned, delete the Curves Adjustment, it's not needed now. Now make sure you have the actual image selected, that's the one that you've got the trace around. To place or paste the paste the selected image in a different background is one option. If you want to place the selected image in the different background, proceed as follows. Select the photo persona again, select pasteboard and select copy. And you can see what I've got there. Pasteboard and then copy. Open the image where you want to place it that the copy that is, and click pasteboard and paste. Now this image that I've got here is a, an extremely large image. It's a full size photo. It's nearly 5,000 pixels by 4,000 pixels, which is a vastly bigger than the image I've got in there. But you adjust that with the transform um, options, the transform toolbar. So adjust the size so the image fits. Now I've got a telephoto lens there, um, to emphasize the photo of the mountains and the landscape and that kind of thing. It's just an example. Or, you might simply want to save the image. So paste it into another layer and deselect the original. And you can see there, I've got it in a layer above the original, which is locked, and I've deselected the original, so you can't even see the original. It's just the image there that we've copied, and it's on a separate layer. To export and save that selected image as a PNG, you do the following. Save it with a transparent background, because if you've set it up on a new layer, which will have a transparent background, because you've just pasted it in there. You want to work on it later, or use it somewhere else, or just keep it in your kit of things, you proceed. Now deselect the original image layer, because you don't want that. Select the copied layer. Select the document tab, select export, and type PNG. You can tap on preview if you wish, to check that it's all OK. And if it is, tap OK. There's the PNG selected, nothing special there. Preview is in the bottom right hand corner. And that's what I've done. I've got a preview. Now I reduced it to 50% by pulling it in with my finger and thumb. That's all you need to do. And that's quite a good image sitting on a black background. Very nice. So close that and export it. And it's all done. Now there's no more there. Thanks very much for watching. And I hope you enjoy this little um, tutorial.